Let's look at an example of how to build a data-driven test. I mean, what's the point of testing and then manually modifying? We want to actually throw some data at this. So I've already got a simple app. It's just got the testlib module in there. There's nothing in the main, and I've created a blank widget. We're going to add QDebug. We'll add QTest. And we're going to add some functions. So this is going to be very similar to the last one, but we're going to do it radically differently. So we're going to say private, and we want slots. So we're going to have a function called test age. Now we want test age to test, well, data. We're testing an actual variable. So we're going to take this entire signature here, copy that, and I'm going to put it first just so you can see the order in which these are called. And we're going to add underscore data. So what Qt's going to do in the background is it's going to say, go through every private slot, look for ones that have underscore data, find the matching signature, and generate the data for it. Whew, that's kind of nuts. So we're going to add that. Add that. So we're going to generate some data here. And we're just going to say QTest. And QTest comes built in with a data container, if you want to call it this way. So we're going to add a column. And this may actually kind of look like a database, really. So we're going to add a string. And we're going to call this name. We're going to add another column, int, let's call this age, and now we're going to add some rows. Because we have our data structure in place, we're actually in the background using a model of some type. We're going to just add rows, and it's going to have to align with the data structure that we've just given it. So we're going to say invalid, and of course, because we have a string and then an age, we have to add them in that order. So we'll say, whoops, we'll say Bob is 190 years old. Let's grab this. And we're just going to add a few of these. So we're going to say old. And let's say I'm 44. And Heather's 25. Under age. And let's say under age is hmm, the dog here. The dog is 14 years old. And one more. Retired, and let's say grandma's retired here. And grandma is a ripe 90 years old. That's it, that's all there is to it. So I'm just going to say our data has now been generated. And now we can actually move into our test. So what we need to do is get the row data. We're going to use QFetch. So what QFetch does is say, hey, what are you really looking for? So we need to give it the type and then give it a variable of some kind. Notice how we haven't actually declared the variable. We're just actually saying it's a type and here's the name I want to give it. So QFetch in the background is going to make that variable for us. So now we're fetching a name, or a name string and an age integer, which aligns with the model that we just gave it. Not truly a model in the background, but you kind of get what I'm saying here. So Q info. We will cover models once we get into GUI programming. Um, I didn't want to do it 
here because it's not going to make a, a whole lot of sense talking about a model view framework if you're really not seeing the view. So I'm going to say testing age. And then we're going to just do some simple if. And we'll say if age is less than zero or age is greater than 100. Actually, let's change this to less than or equal to. Eh, just change it to one. So if age is less than one or age is greater than 100, then we're just going to fail this out. Let's go ahead and grab this. I'm going to say age is less than 21. We want them to be an adult. And then we're going to say if age is greater than 40, then we're going to key warn. And we're just going to say, getting old there, pal. However, if that age is greater than 65, we're just going to queue info this out. Notice the case sensitivity here. Now, when I say case sensitivity, we're talking about Q warn, for example. If I were to do something like this, you have a Q warning and a Q warn. Don't get those confused. Save this, and we're going to jump into our main, and we're going to do something a little bit different here. So we're going to say Q test, and let's include our widget. And we're going to take this whole main function and we're just going to completely destroy it. That's right. So we're going to say qtest main. And what this does is actually adds in a main function. And we're going to test the widget class. You don't need to do this. This is just actually a really cool feature. So what this is going to do is it's going to say, hey, create a main function and use this class. So it's going to create an instance of this class, and then it's going to call the actual tests. Save and run. And you can see our data-driven tests. So first thing it's doing is it's initiating the test case. The last thing it's doing is clean up test case, and then it's generating our data. The data is generated. So you notice that happens before anything else happens. The underscore data function is being called. And then it goes in and does the actual test cases. So it's testing invalid, testing old, testing young, testing underage, testing retired. These are all things out of, you guessed it, our data set that we handed this thing. Invalid, old, young, underage, retired. So it's going to go through and test each one of these. For example, Q info, test age young, testing age Heather is 25. And test age young has passed. So now we're actually creating data-driven tests. Unfortunately, Rango under age is only 14 and he must be an adult, so we have a failure. Really, really solid example on how to do this. And you can see we get our totals, five pass, two failed, zero skip, zero blacklisted, one millisecond. Let's just face it, Qt is extremely complex and it has a massive learning curve, but once you learn it, you can do just about anything. Unfortunately, learning Qt is a challenge in itself, and if you've tried learning straight from the docs, you've probably become easily frustrated. While they do a really good job, they're arguably some of the best documentation in the world, they don't go that extra step and leave a lot of people guessing what to do. How do all these things interconnect? That's why I started developing videos. I've done videos not just on my own YouTube channel, which you're watching now, but also on the official Q Studios channel. And I've started doing video courses out on Udemy.com. 
Right now, I have the Cute Core series. It covers beginners, intermediate, and advanced, so it'll take you straight from Hello World all the way up to building a complex, multi-threaded, encrypted TCP server. On top of that, if you don't want any of this, you can still join the Voidrooms Facebook group, which has a pretty flourishing group of developers, and we discuss everything, not just cute. I hope to see you there.